Welcome to Sample Size for Proportions. Suppose we want to collect sample data in order to estimate some population proportion. The question is how many sample items must be obtained? For example, how many people should we survey in, in order to obtain the criteria that we want? When an estimate of p hat is known, we're going to use the formula n equals z critical value squared times p hat times q hat all over e squared. When no estimate of p hat is known, we're going to use the formula n equals z critical value squared times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by e squared. When we don't know what p hat already is, we're going to assume that p hat and q hat are both 50%. <clears throat> When we do these problems, we are going to always have to follow the rounding rule. If the computed sample size n is not a whole number, we're going to round the value of n up to the next larger whole number. Even if normal rounding rules would say round, round down, um, we are always going to round up because we're not going to count a partial person. So in this problem, I like this problem because it has changed over the years says, suppose a sociologist wants to determine the current percentages of U.S. households using email. How many households must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that the sample percentage is an error by no more than four percentage points? So we're going to use a result from an earlier study in 1997, over 20 years ago. Only 16.9% of U.S. households used email. The general formula for this, since we know a previous study, we're going to use n equals z critical value squared times p hat times q hat all divided by e squared. Let's figure out our values here. The z critical value, okay, so since it's a 95% confidence level, okay, since it's a 95% confidence level, the z critical value is we're going to have to look it up on our chart. So on our chart, the z critical value chart, the 95% confidence level, the critical value will be 1.96. We know that p hat is going to be 0.169. Remember, q hat is going to be 1 minus 0.169. So let me go ahead and get my calculator here. 1 minus 0.169. And that is going to be 0 0.831. Then our margin of error E, it says here, is no more than 4 percentage points in error by no more than 4 percentage points. So that's our margin of error is 4% or 0 0.04. Let's go ahead and substitute these into our problem. N equals, and we're going to take 1.96, square that, times 0.169, times 0.831, divided by 0 0.04 squared. On our calculator, we're just going to type in what we see on the top divided by what we see on the bottom, no extra parentheses needed here. 1.96 squared times 0.169 times 0.831 divided by 0 0.04 squared. We're going to get 337.194039. So we can say we must randomly survey at least 338, remember we have to round up households and ask them if they use email. That's the type of sentence I like, okay? And there are many ways of writing this sentence. You can look in your textbook or online as well. In the next problem, okay, the same type of problem, but assume that we have no prior information. We're going to assume we have no prior information because, as you can tell, 1997 is, is quite a long time ago. So that's kind of out of date data here. So we're going to still use very similar formula, except now z critical value squared times instead of p hat, 
since we don't know anything, we're going to assume p hat is 50% and q hat is 50%. So we're going to times it by 0.5 times 0.5, our margin of error squared. So substitute those same values. Since it's the same confidence level, our critical value is still 1.96. Square that times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by same margin of error, 0 0.04 squared. And again, let's type that in our calculator. So 1.96 squared times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0 0.04 squared. And it's going to be 600.25. Let's write a sentence. So we must randomly survey. Instead of saying at least, I can say a minimum of, and we're going to say round up, remember, so 601 households. And what question are we going to ask them? We're going to and ask them if they use email. Now, if I were conducting the survey, I would rather survey 338 people, maybe 339, 340. Remember, it's at least, so we can always survey more, rather than survey 601 or more uh, people. So if you have a prior study, maybe something from like last year or something like that, it'd be much easier to use. Now let's just check ourselves on StatCrunch. So on StatCrunch, we're going to use the stat feature and we're going to go down to proportion stats again and we're going to do one sample. Whoops. One sample. And this is the new menu we're going to use. We're going to use width sample size. Width sample size. Click on that brings up a new window. Let me widen this out so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so our confidence level is 95%. Our target proportion, if we're doing the first problem, our target proportion, remember, is our sample proportion, 0.169, so we're going to have to change that. Then over here on the right hand side, the width, this is the tricky part. The width, remember, we talked about the width when we talked about confidence intervals. If we're given the margin of error, the width is twice that amount. Okay, so since our width is 0 0.0, or I'm sorry, since our margin of error is 4%, that means our width is 8%. So here, you want to know that our width for these problem is going to be 8% because that's two times the margin of error. That's an important thing to know. And then our sample size, we're going to leave blank because that's what we want to calculate. So I hit compute. Oh, I typed in two decimals there. Let me correct that real quick hit compute, and there we go. You can see that StatCrunch does indeed round it there to 338. Now the next problem, we're going to change our sample percentage, our target proportion to 0.5 instead, 0.5. And again, I'm going to adjust the width to 8%. Remember, it's twice our margin of error. Hit compute, and there's your 600. 601. Okay, so there's a plan A with the formulas, plan B with uh, StatCrunch or any other sort of technology.